Hi, my name is Garvin Bowen. I'm one of the clinical anatomy research fellows here. And today I'll be talking to you about um, Da Vinci and his work, uh, specifically uh, with emphasis uh, on the spine. So just my disclaimer, prior to actually doing this review, um, this is a, as much as I knew about Leonardo Da Vinci, right? Just that picture, that's all I had in my mind. So this review was actually quite enlightening for me myself. All right, so I'm just going to give you a little review of uh, my presentation. First, we're going to talk about Leonardo da Vinci as an individual and how his background actually was a platform for him getting into anatomy. And then we'll talk a little bit about his work and how his work actually impacted medical education today. All right, so a little bit about Leonardo da Vinci. Um, so few individuals in history have exerted actually so great an influence on several fields and made extensive contributions uh, to different disciplines. When considering these persons, Leonardo da Vinci uh, is among the most prominent, one of the most prominent figures. Um, his inquisitive experimental mentality led to him making many contributions, uh, such as uh, discovering the function of the spine and also the proper anatomy of several organ systems. Right, so Leonardo da Vinci was actually born in a place known as Vinci, which is actually located um, on Mount Albono in the valley of the river Arno, dividing Florence from Pisa. Thus, his name, Leonardo da Vinci, actually means Leonardo of Vinci. He didn't actually have a surname. At a young age, Leonardo da Vinci was committed to the charge of a famous sculptor, uh, whose name was Andrea del Verrocchio uh, uh, at the time at which he actually acquired the skill of topographical anatomy because he was taken under his wings. Uh, learning the skill actually made Leonardo da Vinci better at presenting or doing an anatomical studies. The keen eye he developed, the uh, attention to detail, made his work far superior to that of his contemporaries at the time. Leonardo's, actually, his most perceptive work in anatomy began when he uh, dissected the cadaver of a woman who he recently witnessed passing. So just a little bit about... having some problems here. Okay, right, so just a little bit about uh, Leonardo da Vinci's work. All right, so many uh, novel things are actually uh, accredited to Leonardo da Vinci. He actually presented the first accurate portrayal of the middle meningeal artery and anterior, uh, the anterior and middle meningeal arteries and the middle and posterior cranial fossas, the first accurate description of these um, structures. He also accurately described uh, the heart as four-chambered in a time when it was dogmatically viewed as being two-chambered. And he also has the first uh, accurate description in history of uh, the pathophysiology of arteriosclerosis and uh, portal hypertension. So This is just a picture of one of his uh, sketches of the heart. So Leonardo actually brought a new uh, way of, of viewing anatomy uh, to the field of anatomy. Uh, he was actually uh, the first person to start viewing at an anatomical structures uh, from multiple angles and also cross-sectionally. Um, uh, one example of this is where he actually uh, depicts uh, the sinuses. I have a picture here that I'd like to show you. The paranasal sinuses, both uh, frontal and maxillary. So we can see that in this picture, we can see clearly here, you can see the sinuses, both frontal and maxillary in a coronal plane. His depictions it not only like demonstrated uh, structures, but it also demonstrated structures uh, with relation to their functions. And one actually, one actually good example of this is where he depicted how uh, sexual organs work together, not just uh, synergistically, uh, but complementary to 
uh, accomplish their, their function. Uh, this is an example of that we can see. And although the anatomy here, the internal anatomy here, uh, may not be accurate, we can look at this as more of a picture describing a, a concept of how the sexual organs work together to accommodate their function. So Leonardo da Vinci's work uh, in comparison to his contemporaries was actually far ahead of his time. However, it was not completely, some of his work was not completely accurate. And this may be actually attributed to the fact that at the time, uh, many of the anatomists, their views and their concepts were heavily uh, influenced by their predecessors. And also, one of the other things that could be attributed to the, why Leon, some of Leonardo's uh, work was not completely accurate was the fact that his earlier dissections were actually done on animals, uh, birds, uh, oxen, horses, just to name a few. So right now, I'd like to just focus a little bit on Leonardo's work on the spine. So. He's accredited with uh, the first accurate uh, description of the uh, lumbar lordosis and uh, thoracic kyphosis of the spine. He correctly uh, illustrated that with the proper articulations of the vertebral bodies together uh, with the ribs. He also actually revealed the function of the spinal cord in one of his experiments. Uh, where he actually pitted, and pitted is where you actually sever the spinal cord of a of the specimen. So he severed the, spe the spinal cord of the specimen. And he noted that after he spinal he severed the spinal cord, that the organism seemed to have stopped moving, stop having any uh, bodily processes. And this is actually um, illustrated in one of his the, the comments he made. Uh, after his experiment. He noted that the frog, he said, instantly dies when the medulla of the spine is perforated, and previously it lived without a head, without a heart, or internal intestines or skin. Here, therefore, appears to lie the foundation of life. And from this, he inferred that the spinal cord had something to do with movement. Okay, so just a, a look at some of his anatomical drawings of the spine. Firstly, here we have one of his drawings of the spines, and we can see, just looking at it at first view, there are a lot of inaccuracies with the drawing. Uh, firstly, uh, the tendons, which seem to be illustrating muscles. There's actually no muscle that attaches uh, from the cervical spine to the superior border of the scapula or from the mastoid process to uh, the thoracic spine. Here he seems to be trying to depict uh, what uh, seems to be the trapezius muscles and the levator scapulae. Uh, uh, it may be attributed to the fact that uh, Leonardo's mind as an, uh, as an engineer um, drew these uh, structures to illustrate the function of the particular muscles and not necessarily that he observed the, uh, this after dissection. Just comparing this to an actual, uh, an actual figure of, of what is more accurate, we can see, as I said, there's actually no muscle that uh, connects these two structures in the way depicted by da Vinci. And actually, he made the statement after uh, drawing the, the previous figure that I just showed you, uh, you know, giving credence to the fact that it was more of a conceptual drawing, not necessarily accurately depicting anatomy. So here we have some uh, of his drawings. Uh, we have a section of the spinal cord, uh, more specifically the cervical spinal cord. And we can see here, um, he's illustrating uh, what seems to be uh, uh, the spinal cord and the brachial plexus. However, we see that the vertebrae here are actually 
uh, depicted in a very like rudimentary fashion, uh, not um, showing the particular detail, not showing the particular detail of of the actual uh, cervical bodies. Because they lack many distinctive features of the structures which can be perceived at this level, such as uh, the dorsal and the ventral roots converging to form the spinal nerves. In clear contrast, in this figure, we actually see uh, he illustrates that anatomical features which can be appreciated from a posterior aspect of the skeletal form, uh, which were absent in figure in the previous figure. This being said, gross inaccuracies are still noted. The inferior angulation of the articulation of the ribs posteriorly is grossly exaggerated when you compare this structure, when you compare this to an actual accurate drawing of the spine, you can see. but we can just see that the angulations of the ribs are a lot exaggerated. Here's another uh, drawing of his of the spine. Uh, he correctly uh, portrays the, the S-shaped curvature of the spine. However, the rib cage is actually disjointed or not connected to the spine as it is in, in actuality but this is actually a good depiction of the S-shaped uh, curvature of the spine. In this figure, uh, this is actually one of the most accurate uh, presentations of the spinal cord at Leonardo's time and even to today. He replicates the articulations of the vertebrae and the structural dimensions of the vertebrae with great exactitude. You know, this gives credence to the perception of Leonardo as an exceptional artist. In the absence of high definition imaging modalities, he was able to accurately delineate the, vert the vertebral column structure with such preciseness of feet, which was no small feat. So how did his work impact medical education? Um, well, uh, as I said before, Leonardo brought the idea of viewing anatomical structures from multiple angles. So the idea of viewing structures in a coronal plane, a sagittal plane, a horizontal plane can actually be, actually be attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. And many other accurate illustrations of, many other accurate illustrations of several structures. So in short, uh, we saw how his training as a topic, uh, receiving training in topographical anatomy actually helped him to uh, better describe or better portray or illustrate anatomy and how he presented several accurate illustrations of his uh, an anatomical figures and just a little bit about the spine. That's it.